Hello everyone, once again we are back to our channel but this time with a new topic from physics that is thrust and pressure. Now this is one topic that many of us we may find it difficult, we may find it boring but let us see how we can make it an interesting one. Before you begin with any concept or any topic you should have one thing clear in your mind. Why you are actually studying that topic? I'll give you some clues. I always use a very sharp knife in my kitchen. Why don't I use a blunt knife? We all must have seen paper pins, all pins. They have pointed ends. Why don't they have broad ends? We must have seen huge tractors. They have large tires. Why don't they have small tires? We all must have seen the cutting tools like pair of scissors or a knife or pliers they all have sharp edges they all have pointed edges why is it so suppose if i want to construct a huge building for myself i'll make one thing sure that the foundation the base of that building is quite white why is it so there are so many whys hovering around so we will have the clarity we will know the exact reason the exact logic behind these things once we go through this video based on thrust and pressure. Now, before we actually go into the reasoning part, we should understand what is the thrust and what is this pressure. So, let's get started. If you can notice the figure here, there is a man's hand and he's trying to push a nail inside a wooden block, right? He's applying some force in order to push that nail inside the wooden block. So what is this thrust? Whenever the force is applied on any surface in the direction perpendicular to the surface, as you can see here in the figure, whenever the force is applied in the direction perpendicular to the surface, then that force is termed as thrust. Then what is this pressure? The effect of thrust per unit area, the effect that that thrust produces per unit area is called pressure and the SI unit of pressure is Pascal. One important thing to remember is this pressure is a scalar quantity. Right. Now let us understand this thing better with the help of an example. If you can focus on the right hand side, pressure is thrust upon area. This means pressure is directly proportional to thrust but it is inversely proportional to area. Now what does that mean? It means that if I say the two things are inversely proportional, that means they will behave in an opposite manner. Means if I am going to increase the area of contact, then my pressure will decrease. And if I'm going to reduce my area of contact, then my pressure will increase. We will see this with the help of a figure right in front of us. There is a child and we are having two mattress. The mattress are exactly same. They are foam mattress. In one case, the child is simply standing and in other case, he's lying down. If I see the first case, in my first case, the entire body of the child is in contact with the mattress. That means my area of contact is more. So the amount of pressure that the child will be putting on the mattress will be less because they both behave in inverse manner. And see, that is why nothing is happening to the mattress. It is perfectly fine. But when you see the second case, the child is standing on the mattress. That means only his feet are in contact with the mattress. That means the area of contact here has been reduced. And if the area of contact will be less, pressure is going to be more because they both behave in an inverse manner. And that is why you can notice that your mattress is sinking. Why? Because the child is exerting more pressure in the second case. Why is it happening? Because here the area of contact has been reduced. Let us see a few more examples like this. 